So the next thing for you to learn about HTML tags is that tags can have attributes. So we've already seen this in action. We've worked with the link tag to link our HTML and our CSS together. And the link tag, the way we used it, had two attributes. And those two attributes are right here. Link, rel, stylesheet, href, main.css. I've created a folder, 007, tag attributes. And inside that folder, it's got, you know, four more folders, one for the link element, one for the image element, one for the anchor element, and one for the paragraph element. So all of those elements are going to demonstrate how different tags can also have attributes. And sometimes they need to have attributes. All right. So uh, here's the link element. And that's the link rel style sheet href main CSS and it connects this CSS document to that HTML document. One of the ways I really like to work in WebStorm is to right click up here on the tab, choose split vertically. So I'm clicking on my CSS, I'm gonna choose split vertically. I now have main CSS here and also here. I'm gonna close this one and then right there, I've got my HTML and my CSS. So I could see that I have this rule set and it has this selector, which is selecting all divs over on this page, and there's only one. And uh, that, that rule set also has uh, this declaration block with these declarations, and each of these declarations have a property and a value. So just a little bit of a reminder there of the terminology used when talking about CSS rule sets. Selector, code block, declaration block, declarations, and each declaration has properties and values. All right, so what is this link tag? What are those different attributes there? And that's the word you wanna learn and commit to memory, attributes. So tags have attributes. That's the takeaway from this video. This link tag, what do those different attributes do? Well, to learn about a tag or an element, whatever you wanna call it, go MDN link. And uh, so now I'm gonna learn about the link element or the link tag whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and here's the link element. And you'll notice I could read about it, it tells me what it does, and then I could come down here and I could read about attributes. Well, there's a lot of attributes that, that it could use. We are using the href attribute, and the href at attribute specifies the URL of the linked resource. A URL might be absolute or relative. We're gonna learn all about absolute and relative URLs very soon. And then also we have the rel attribute. And the rel attribute specifies the relationship. And uh, the attribute must be space separated list of the link type values. What are link type values? We could follow this hyperlink and scroll down here to style sheet. And we could read, okay, this is one of the link type values. These are all of the different link type values that could be used. And we could see up here, right, allowed in these elements, the link type value, right, for style sheet is only allowed in link, right? So that style sheet is only allowed with the link tag. And you can see other, you know, link types which you could use for rel that would work with the link tag by looking at those right there. So that's a little bit about reading documentation how you read documentation. So I just wanna refresh that. All right, so we've got four new elements here, four new tags, whatever word you wanna use. <laughs> and uh, these four new elements, link, image, anchor, paragraph, we've seen some of them before. So the link links the style sheet. An image is how we put an image in a document. And so to do that, I have the second folder here. And I'm gonna open up that folder. And here to create that image tag, I just type image and then hit tab, and it brings it up with the two required attributes that I need for this to work. It'll actually work with just source. You could take out alt. Alt stands for alternative text, but here's a little shortcut. You can see that my cursor is flashing red to black in source. I could hold down control on my keyboard and press the space bar. So if you're on Mac, that's gonna be command space bar. And again, if I ever misquote any of these, you can look them up in the help key map reference. Okay, cool. So now I have image source and it gives me options of what I could choose. So instead of typing it, again, to get those options, control spacebar, instead of typing it, I just press enter and it's typed for me. 
So I'm going to get rid of that line of code right there. Control Y to delete it. And, uh, and now I have this puppy, which will show up. Kabam. Look at it over in Chrome. And there's the puppy. If I did not have the correct wording, right? That's looking for that file. It can't find it. And then I came over here and tried to look at that web page. It's going to show me the alternative text, an image of a cute puppy. So that's what the alternative text does. Alternative text also helps with screen readers. All right. So there's the, the puppy document. And the two attributes, the main thing we're learning about this in this video, is that tags have attributes. All right. So next thing is the anchor element. The anchor element is the way we make hyperlinks. So this anchor element here, if I look at this in a web page, I click it, it takes me to Google. And you'll also notice it launched a new tab. Okay, so it's the attribute target blank, which is weird, but it's like saying a blank browser window. So launch it in a new tab. So without that attribute, right, if I refresh this page, now it's going to be the same tab. I'm in the same tab. It took me to the same place. However, if I add that attribute in, target blank, underscore blank, make sure that underscore is there. If I add that in, refresh this page, click that, it launched a new tab, a blank browser window, and took me to the link in that browser window. So that's how the link tag works. Here is the emit that you would write to get that to come up. And you could write either that version or this version. I would write that version. I think it's just quicker and easier. All right, so the next deal is the paragraph element. Now the paragraph element, we're adding in an attribute to this tag, which is a class attribute. And a class attribute is a special attribute which allows you to target things with CSS. And so here it says class happiness. And then over here in my CSS, this rule set, I'm using period happiness. And so that period tells the CSS in the HTML file, look for the class happiness. Or it tells the HTML, hey, the class happiness in the CSS file, look for dot happiness. And then all of this formatting is going to be applied to any tag that has the attribute class happiness. So I could have a completely different tag, div. Well, let me rewrite that div dot happiness and something else. Happy something, happy again. Let's make it again. And now when I preview this page, this formatting got applied both to this tag and to this tag. So it got applied to that tag and also, how do I do multiple selection? That tag and also this tag. There we go. So it got applied to both. Preview that, look at it, and happy again. <laughs> happy again. Yay. I'm going to get rid of that line. Just happy. I like that. It actually has some nice design to it. A big, large red happy. And you can see we have color, which changes the font color, font size, which changes the font size, and margin left, which moves it off the left edge. So a good way to learn about HTML and CSS <clears throat> is just to delete lines. Here I'm going to comment it out, control forward slash, commented that out, and, uh, and then go back and refresh the page and see how it changed it. And then I could add it in and then go back and refresh the page, and I can see how it changes. So that's a good way to learn about HTML and CSS. And it's super helpful if you do live preview and have two monitors. So as you change code, you could see what's happening on your other monitor. So I really recommend that. All right, so the main takeaway from this video is that you have learned that HTML tags also can have attributes, and some HTML tags require, like this one right here, require certain attributes for them to even work. <laughs> so you've learned about tag attributes in this video.